gun sales have surged as the coronavirus outbreak grips the U.S. Across the country, gun sales on the rise. Nervous shoppers are emptying store shelves across... But in Washington, a growing threat to the gun lobby... NRA, shame on you! ...from the public and politicians... If I'm elected and I'm coming for you... ...drawing on years of reporting. The threat now with this election is greater than any threat we've faced. It will not happen on my watch. Now, NRA you. under fire. This program contains graphic content, which may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello. Today is the day. The day of my massacre shall begin. He was a 19-year-old dropout. All the kids in school will run in fear and hide. I hate everyone and everything. With the power of my AR, you will all know who I am. <laughs> You're all going to die. Oh, uh, yeah. Can't wait. It was Valentine's Day. And we had joked days prior that I was going to ruin Valentine's Day with this quiz. And the fire alarm went off. I heard what sounded like faint pops. Students started to evacuate thinking it was a fire drill. And that's when he came up the stairs and ravaged that floor. In less than six minutes, he fired 140 rounds from an AR-15. It just became very real, very fast. Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Yo! No, no, no! People were texting and Snapchatting. I don't know where I you are now. Gun. I heard one gunshot. Oh, we thought it was a drill initially, but it's not. Oh. We stood in a closet, 19 of us and the teacher. I just had to take out my phone and film a lot of what was going on. Keep up, guys. Keep those hands up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ryan Deitch kept filming as he and his classmates fled. But we couldn't tell what was going on at what point. It's a tragedy. 14 students and three adults were dead. It's breaking news, a deadly shooting at a Florida high school. Parkland, Florida, this is where there has been a school shooting. It sends students rushing out there into the streets. numerous fatalities. As the students evacuated, so did the shooter. He was later arrested. Number of parents who are uh, crying right now. They're worried about their children in that. Parents going running uh, to that area to find their loved one. You're looking at live pictures there where there is an active shooter at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Parkland, Florida, that's in Broward County. We're just getting this information and in. it's breaking at this hour. Once again, students had been gunned down in a school. Yeah, hey, do you guys need a live interview? But this time, after the 105th school shooting, these students were determined they wouldn't be just another statistic. We didn't just want it to end here. We didn't just want it to end once the cameras went away. We wanted to make sure that it wasn't just forgotten about. We wanted to make sure that the story was still being told. Ryan and his classmates went on the offensive. Okay, now I want to introduce Emma Gonzalez. If all our government and president can do is send thoughts and prayers, then it's time for victims to be the change that we need to see. 18-year-old Emma Gonzalez led the charge. The people in the government telling us nothing could have ever been done to prevent this. We call BS. 
They say that no laws could have been able to prevent the hundreds of senseless tragedies that have occurred. We call BS. They had a target. To every politician who was taking donations from the NRA, shame on you. The National Rifle Association, the nation's powerful gun lobby. We had learned in, in our own government class that the NRA is one of the largest and most powerful lobbying forces. And we decided that they couldn't just keep going the way they were going. For Gonzalez's speech is trending on Twitter this day. A teenager is getting a lot of attention on social media. Anguished voices calling for change. Students turned activists train their own political sites on the NRA. I think that that speech resonated with so many Americans uh, going up against this kind of entrenched Washington behemoth. You know, they were everything the NRA is not. Dead hands. Once one of the most feared forces in Washington, for decades dominating one issue, guns. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a An gun. An unrivaled power that would ultimately become a target. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. The National Rifle Association has made possible the training of thousands of instructors. Long before it was at the center of a political firestorm, the NRA was something very different. The NRA was a safety organization. They helped people teach their children and, and their friends and family how to use and store and keep firearms safely. This is an organization that back in the 60s was uh, a very tame, not particularly political organization. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. But that would begin to change with the assassinations of the 1960s. There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was shot by a $12 38 caliber mail order rifle. Martin Luther King, a 760 game master. And Robert F. Kennedy, a Saturday night special. Armed conflict broke out on America's streets. In Washington, the response, gun control. Effective crime control remains, in my judgment, effective gun control. Those words would be a call to arms for some in the National Rifle Association. NRA people said, wait a minute, we've got other things to worry about than, than teaching guys how to shoot or how to hunt and so forth or collect guns. And that's when, that was the transformative period. The transformation happened here in 1977. The National Rifle Association convention in Cincinnati went into overtime last night, a stormy all-night session. Two sides faced off, hunters versus gun rights activists. When it was over, some dissident members had taken control of the 400,000-member organization. What it means is even stricter support for the right to bear arms and against gun control. They believed that it was incumbent upon the NRA to become a Second Amendment organization and they cleared the board of people that disagreed with them, and the NRA has essentially been that ever since. This is an NBC News special report. But just a few years later, another dramatic shooting would challenge the NRA. The president coming out now. President Reagan shot in the lung. There's the shots. and his press secretary, James Brady, in the head. In the aftermath, once again, a call for gun control. These incidents seem to keep happening, and that is a real puzzle and a tragic puzzle. Over the years, Jim Brady became a powerful symbol. A gun control group formed around him in opposition to the NRA, which had launched a full-scale lobbying effort in the Capitol. By the time Bill Clinton was elected, 
the anti-gun movement had found a president willing to take up their cause. President Clinton blasted the National Rifle Association. Clinton cracked down on guns. President Clinton signed the crime bill into law today. Banning the import of military-style handguns. Bans the importation of foreign-made assault pistols. The assault weapons ban. A ban on 19 types of assault weapons. And background checks at gun stores. A stunning victory for the president. It seemed like a victory for the gun control forces. But that's not the way the NRA saw it. Has the NRA really lost its clout in Congress? I think NRA benefited tremendously through the Clinton years because of the extreme radicalism of the anti-gun, call them left-wingers, uh, I call them regressives, not progressives, but the anti-gun people. It's in combat that the NRA thrives. It's with enemies that the NRA is best able to communicate its point of view and, above all, raise money. Near the end of his presidency, Clinton would take on the NRA one last time. 911, what's your emergency? There's shooting going on at Columbine High School. And I got shots going off my screen. It was set in motion by a shooting at a Colorado high school. The pictures that we are watching here in Colorado are being broadcast nationally. It's very chaotic out there right now. SWAT teams went in to rescue possible We're going to continue to follow this horrific situation taking place in Littleton, Colorado this afternoon. Americans would see for the first time students being gunned down. 188 rounds fired off. and a bomb detonated in the cafeteria. As the two assailants, seen here, enter the room and hunt for student victims, they had killed 13 and wounded 23 more. You see some of the victims being taken out. We want to advise you we have no confirmation of that. They are continuing to find victims throughout the building, throughout the school, as SWAT team members slowly go through the building because it is not secure as of now. In the days that followed, the police gathered evidence, including home videos of the attackers and their weapons. Yo, what up, dog? I heard you got some beef with me. They had assembled a small arsenal, sawed off shotguns, a 9mm carbine rifle, and a Tech 9 pistol with a 30 round magazine. The shooters got a friend to buy some of the weapons at a gun show, which didn't require a background check. It would become known as the gun show loophole. Columbine was a direct threat to the American gun culture because Columbine really brought to the surface the idea that a couple of disturbed teenagers, if they want to on any given weekend, can go to a, a gun show and assemble the weapons they need to go and take over the school and start shoot, shooting everybody. At the Colorado State Capitol, the anguish over the Columbine massacre turned to protest. In the wake of the shootings, Thousands protested in Denver. Some here are channeling their grief into protest. Demanding that something, anything, be done. 8,000 strong, they tried One of them was the father of a 15-year-old victim. I had a sign made at a sign shop with Daniel's picture on it and words, my son died at Columbine, he would expect me to be here today. The protesters had a specific target, guns and the NRA. Something is wrong in this country. When a child can grab a gun, grab a gun so easily and shoot a bullet <laughs> into the middle of a child's face as my son experienced, something is wrong. The National Rifle Association, target of much anger in Colorado. As it happened, just blocks away, the NRA was gathering for its long-planned annual Gun convention. Gun insist there's no connection between the Columbine tragedy and weapons. Inside, top executives of the NRA weighed how to respond. They issued a public statement of sympathy and then sent out their most famous member, movie star Charlton Heston. You couldn't have picked a better caricature of who you wanted speaking with that stentorian voice of his. America must stop this predictable pattern of reaction. When an isolated, terrible event occurs, 
Our phones ring, demanding that the NRA explain the inexplicable. Why us? Because their story needs a villain. Despite the shooting, the NRA stayed focused on its core belief, the right to own guns. The base of the National Rifle Association believes so strongly it's more a religion or what a religion used to be. There's a passion involved in it. The NRA is the closest thing that a membership group can have to just pure patriotism. They love their country. As long as there's a Second Amendment, evil can never conquer us. Tyranny in any form can never find footing within a society of law-abiding, armed, ethical people. Heston tapped into a fundamental fear of NRA members, that the government would use Columbine to restrict and then take away their guns. Purchases at gun stores start to go up astronomically as people who are thinking about buying a particular gun over the course of the next year or so worry that they may outlaw it. I better get it while I can. Hundreds of thousands of new members signed up for the NRA right after Columbine. The gun is a symbol of freedom. The only thing that keeps bad government from taking over. It really has nothing to do with guns. It has to do with freedom. But things started getting more political. The President of the United States. Within weeks, while speaking to the Columbine community, President Clinton would push back on the NRA and rally the gun control forces. You have a unique chance, a chance, to make sure that the children of Columbine are never forgotten. The attack in Columbine was such a shock uh, to the body politic that we felt the country needed to do something. Thank you and God bless you. Clinton proposed a bill to close that gun show loophole. Mr. Ashcroft, Mr. Baucus. It was quickly rushed to a vote. Mr. Feingold, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. As the roll was called, Mr. the Senate was split. Mr. Vice President Gore called to the Capitol to break a deadlock. New laws to govern gun sales were deeply dividing the Senate. Vice President Gore needed to break the tie. On this vote, the yeas are 50, the nays are 50, the Senate being equally divided. The Vice President votes in the affirmative, and the amendment is agreed to. Setback today for the gun lobby and its allies in Congress. One month after Columbine, the NRA had lost the first round. To Democrats, it meant the grip of the National Rifle Association had finally been broken. The gun control battle now moves to the House, where the tide also. The bill to be then headed to the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, and that was where the National Rifle Association would make its stand, under the leadership of Wayne Lapierre. The Wayne that we saw in Columbine was really large and in charge of this huge, dynamic organization. In the 1970s, he started as a lobbyist. If you're a political junkie like Wayne or like myself, it was a wonderful job. And they also stopped trying but Lapierre was no one's idea of a glad-handing lobbyist. He was a very uh, quiet man. I was amazed he was a lobbyist because he did not have the uh, hail fellow well met attitude or personality that I associated with politicians or with lobbyists. And surprisingly for the NRA, he was not a gun enthusiast, more comfortable on K Street than in a duck blind. The safest place you could be with Wayne and a gun back then was in a different state because he really did not know anything about guns. Politics, yes, guns, no. But inside the divided politics of the NRA, Lapierre was skillful, navigating between the sportsmen and the gun rights activists. Wayne could put a finger to the wind and see which way it was blowing, and he would position himself so that neither side would be offended and might even think that he were, in fact, on that side. In an organization that is so beset by factionalism, his being unmoored to any particular point of view is actually very helpful for him in terms of being able to ride the torrents 
that have occasionally swept through the NRA and emerged always on top. Now, LaPierre made a crucial decision to counterattack, fight against Clinton's attempt to close the gun show loophole. What we see is the president now dusting off every tired old gun control bill that's been around his administration for the last six years. The NRA needed to go and show that it could stand up to the president, that it could stand up and it could it could toe to toe meet him in the ring and bash his brains out. It was all part of what would become LaPierre and the NRA's playbook. Wayne LaPierre, executive vice president of the National Rifle Association. This year, more than ever, your vote really can make a difference. Within days, faxes and phone calls. The Clinton-Gore administration isn't wasting any time attempting to further its aggressive anti-gun agenda. Stoking fear that their guns could be taken away. Fear is a much greater motivator in American politics than anything else. The fear of losing rights that you perceive you have. Uh, when that fear level is high, uh, that's when the groups that represent the issue do well. RA calling with an urgent legislative... The NRA activated its members. You don't need thousands of people and you don't need millions of dollars. You need hundreds of people who will get on the phone and really, a, a couple hundred people to show up at a town hall meeting. You do that a couple of times, and your member of Congress gets the message. I'm Charlton Heston. We need your help to protect our freedom. The NRA's yeah. membership, if it had one political trait, they vote. It's that simple. You are a politician. You want to get elected. You want votes. The NRA has votes. It also grades members of both parties punishing them if they break with the NRA on guns. And so if you've got an F rating from the NRA and you are trying to get elected, good luck with that. Those in favor of the amendment will say aye. aye. Those opposed will say no. Aye. After the NRA lobbying blitz, the White House came up 22 votes short. Legislation on Capitol Hill was left for dead today. The, the hands down the victory for the NRA. In the end, only gun buyers. When I saw victory. that after this horrific tragedy, despite everything that people say about we have to do something to prevent this from happening again, when they couldn't do something as basic as that, I was livid. The National Rifle Association. The annual convention. The NRA convention here is rallying the gun rights faithful. One year after Columbine, it was time for another NRA the national convention. convention. Center opened at Ladies and gentlemen, and members of the National Rifle Association of America, your president, Charlton Heston. They had overwhelmed the Clinton administration and successfully demonstrated their power in Congress. It had been a very good year for the NRA. The NRA is back. And now the NRA would take the offensive. That leads me to that one mission that is left undone, winning in November. The race between George W. Bush and Al Gore. That's the last year that the gun issue played a critical uh, role in American politics. It was time to settle score with the man who had broken that tie vote in the Senate, Al Gore. I want to say those fighting words for everyone within the sound of my voice to hear and to heed, and especially for you, Mr. Gore. From my cold, dead hands. The NRA would spend $20 million on the 2000 election, the most aggressive political campaign they had ever undertaken. Al Gore wants government testing, licensing, and registration for all firearms owners. He cast the vote that would have shut down every gun show. This year, vote freedom first, because if Al Gore wins, you lose. To all of you in West Virginia, it's Halloween. And Al Gore doesn't need a mask to scare gun owners and hunters. The NRA wins because it's patient and because long after America's dismay about these gun maskers has faded, 
the NRA and its membership are still thinking about guns. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our election coverage 2000. Stay with us. We're about to take you on an exciting and bumpy ride. And on election day, the NRA was rewarded. Al Gore has lost in Tennessee tonight. Embarrassing Vice President Gore by snatching his state's 11 electoral votes. In no small measure, it was that fight over guns after Columbine that uh, had the firearm community more enlivened, engaged, and a few votes difference, and the whole thing would have gone the other way. Gore was an example to Democrats of the risk of going up against the NRA. Democrats came to believe that gun control was a toxic issue for them. Democrats were running scared of the NRA. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. George W. Bush's inauguration would mark the beginning of a decade where the NRA would get what it wanted. The assault weapons ban would expire. The Supreme Court would rule that individuals had a constitutional right to own guns. Congress would pass a law to protect gun makers from lawsuits. The gun control forces were left in disarray. Gun control movement is fragmented. You don't have what you need to mount a true movement, which is committed warriors. People who don't need money, who don't need um, fancy galas, who come out because they care. Um, that's what the gun people have. But eventually, the NRA would be threatened by two events. A new president, Barack Obama. And an epidemic of mass shootings one that would test the NRA's will. Sandy Hook School, I think there's somebody shooting in here. Sandy Hook School, down the hallway. Okay. They're still surrounding, they're still shooting. 154 rounds from a Bushmaster semi-automatic rifle. It lasted less than five minutes. I keep hearing shooting. I keep hearing popping. This time, it was six and seven year olds. You guys come in my room now. Get in here. Okay, well, there's still shooting going on. Please. I, I need, I need assistance here immediately. Twenty children and six adults were shot dead. All right, shots are still being fired there. Get everybody you can going down there. All right, let me... Outside, it was chaos. My daughter's in the building, I have five children who ran from Sandy Hook School. They were just more emergency vehicles and personnel helicopters than I'd ever seen in my life. I couldn't, I just, it was a surreal scene. I just couldn't believe it. Mark Barden's son, Daniel was a first grader at Sandy Hook Elementary. More and more of the kids were being collected by their families and no Daniel. And there was this growing group of parents that were growing in concern, where, where is my child? Nicole Hockley's son, Dylan, was another first grader at Sandy Hook. You know, and you're searching, searching the eyes, searching the faces for someone that you recognize. And I just, I couldn't. He told us that if you haven't been re reunited with your loved one yet, you're not going to be. majority of those who died today were children, uh, beautiful little kids between the ages of five and ten years old. As a country, we have been through this too many times. May God bless the memory of the victims. And in the words of Spritzer, 
heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. Like Clinton before him, President Obama took up the cause of gun control. He handed the job to Vice President Joe Biden. It was in a context of uh, sorrow, uh, extreme, uh, I mean, anger and frustration about why can't we do something about this? It was like enough is enough is enough. Put together something for me, Joe. At the NRA, they knew another political fight was coming. Uh, my f feeling was, uh-oh, here we go again. Oh, they're going to come out and blame NRA. We're, we're really in trouble now. But I just feared what might happen. When Newtown occurred, it was like Columbine all over again. And we immediately knew there would be a big push among politicians to seize the opportunity, because they're kind of like vultures on the gun issue. They have to wait until there's a pile of dead bodies, and then they come swooping in uh, with their cat calls and everything else. It's very disgusting. The NRA had reason to worry. Obama had long supported gun restrictions. We can make sure that criminals don't have guns in their hands. We can make certain that those uh, who are mentally uh, deranged are not getting hold of handguns. We can trace guns that have been used in crimes. For the NRA, it was time to activate the playbook. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And he almost immediately goes right back to what they usually say, which is that the answer to this is more guns. What if he'd been confronted by qualified armed security. The NRA wins by picking fights. Its power swells in a certain regard uh, every time it has its members feel under attack, that their rights are under attack. Our children, we as a society leave them every day utterly defenseless. And the monsters and the predators of the world know it and exploit it. This was not off the cuff. He didn't lose it. This was very thought out. And they decided on a strategy, and they executed the strategy. Because the people that it resonated with gave more money. And this is what you need to do in order to keep that, that tough persona. And we've got to send the signal that this is not the time to compromise, that Obama is the enemy and they want to take your guns away. Yes, it's too bad about the, the kids, but we are not going to back down. At the White House, they wanted an ally who could reach out to NRA members, and they knew just the man. As your senator, I'll protect our Second Amendment rights. That's why the NRA endorsed me. I'll take on Washington and this administration. Joe Manchin, who had an A rating from the NRA, was shaken by the Newtown shootings. It really got to me. These are babies, five and six-year-old children. Who would have ever, it's just beyond my imagination, most Americans, to conceive that anything this horrific could happen in America. Light bulbs went off at the Capitol. Harry Reid's and Chuck Schumer and their aides realized, wait a second, we now have a Democrat with an A rating from the NRA saying he wants to do something. Manchin returned to the same idea as Clinton, requiring background checks at gun shows. He hoped he could convince the NRA to go along. So Manchin's argument to the NRA is, look, you'll never find a gun safety bit of legislation that is as gun friendly as this. And, and all we're really doing is closing a loophole. I felt this would be something that they would embrace. It was truly a time that Wayne LaPierre and the NRA and the leadership could have rose to another level, complete another level. With polls showing wide public support for expanding background checks, Manchin and the vice president figured they had a chance. Everyone felt like the world was going to change. Everyone felt like this is going to be the mass shooting that makes America really look at its gun laws and change something. I was optimistic. Over 91% of the American people supported expanding 
background checks, 80% of the households that had an NRA member supported it. Under pressure, there was hope that LaPierre might even get on board, depart from the playbook. Within the inner circles of the NRA, the wives of senior NRA officials shedding tears and saying to their husbands, that, that something has to happen. You, you, you have to do something different, honey. And so when they're hearing it from their own members and when they're hearing it from their own wives, and when they're hearing it probably from others on staff, in that moment, they realized, yes, we have to see about doing something here. NRA staff met with Manchin. They made some suggestions on some wording and changes from that standpoint. So yes, they had input, and we valued that input. It didn't take long for news of the meeting to leak. Bad idea. Now Joe Manchin says he might be working with the NRA. The fact that the NRA was even talking with Manchin suggested at least some room for negotiation for the group. Two small groups, the Gun Owners of America and the National Association of Gun Rights, began to circulate letters saying, we hear that the NRA is compromising with Manchin. Uh, there, and they use that, that word, the dreaded C word, uh, that uh, there's a compromise bill. Larry Pratt represented one of those groups, whose 300,000 members were some of the most fervent gun rights activists. The Manchin bill was not aiming at loopholes. It was aiming at nailing down some remaining freedom that American people have. Gun control simply kills people. And for Senator Manchin to wave the bloody shirts of those children from Newtown is despicable. Pratt quickly issued an alert to his members, warning them about the NRA's talks with Manchin. We put out a, an alert saying, please, if you belong to the NRA, call this guy at this number and ask him to urge the powers that be to oppose the bill. LaPierre got the message. This bill wasn't going to fly with hardcore gun owners. The NRA's main anxiety at that moment is not losing, is not seeing something enacted. It's not looking soft to their own membership and to the substantial number of Americans who probably number in the millions who think the NRA is not tough enough. LaPierre pulled the NRA out of the talks. Suddenly, the NRA stopped cooperating uh, with Manchin, uh, stopped returning their emails, stopped calling. We are not going to let our great LaPierre American returned to the playbook. He launched a full-scale assault on the legislation. Remember this TV ad? Just as he had done to Al Gore, he singled out Senator rights. Manchin. That was Joe Manchin's commitment. But now, Manchin is working with President Obama and New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Concerned? You should be. Senator Manchin was vilified by the NRA. It was almost like a personal vendetta. So they, you know, they chewed up one of their own. As LaPierre waited for the votes, Republicans and some conservative Democrats backed away from the bill. Mr. Isaacson. Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Wyden. The amendment is not agreed to. The bill fell five votes short. The NRA had won. How could they vote that way? Don't they understand what happened? How can they do that? How can this be? I mean, it was disbelief and a sense of betrayal. That was the mood. Obama invited the Newtown families to the White House after the vote. Daniel was a first grader at Sandy Hook Elementary School. I know that he felt, he felt a sense of responsibility to us and, and, in, and to the nation and to that 90% of the country that that wanted this, you know, I think he felt a, a strong sense of responsibility toward that, and his, his uh, disgust was palpable. It came down to politics. The worry that it, that vocal minority of gun owners would come after them in future elections. So all in all, this was a pretty shameful day for Washington. Thank you very much, everybody. Any effort at gun control in Washington 
was over. In a stinging loss for President Obama and, I might add, the country. The proposal was rejected, saddening families of the Sandy Hook. Not victim. a single new federal gun law has passed, and that had NRA members celebrated. The nation's capital is the epicenter of the gun control debate today with hundreds of thousands of demonstrators. But by 2018, in the wake of the Parkland shooting, a formidable new threat to the NRA was emerging. The march for our lives right here in Washington is the NRA and its lobby. Those Parkland students had come to lead a march on Washington. Around half a million people at least expected today in Washington. They vented their anger and frustration at the NRA. A march against the NRA, a march against Republican lawmakers. Washington is preparing for today's historic March for Our Lives rally. I was in Washington for the march. To address gun violence and school safety. And, I mean, the energy was huge. Ryan Deitch was there. I've been amazed by what I've seen. I'm amazed that I cannot see the end of this crowd here in D.C. today. Seeing that crowd on that day be unified over this one issue, this might be our reality now, but it doesn't have to be, and we can change it together. Thank you. The NRA has never had to deal with this kind of generational problem before. They had never gone up against a bunch of incredibly smart, talented, and organized young people. Emma Gonzalez rallied the crowds. In a little over six minutes, 17 of our friends were taken from us. Everyone who has been touched by the cold grip of gun violence understands. The fact that it was actually the children who were in the school was a very powerful emotional message to the American public. It was just something unprecedented and something that the, the pro-gun side really didn't have a counter to. Today, the gun debate takes center stage at the White President House. Donald Trump invited the Parkland survivors to now the White the House. The president will host a listening session today at the White House to hear firsthand from survivors. For a face-to-face -face meeting with the president. The question remains is what will actually come out of this? This is a president. It's not going to be talk like it has been in the past. It's been going on too long, too many instances. And we're going to get it done. We're going to be very strong on background checks. We're going to be doing very strong background checks. Very strong emphasis on the mental health of somebody. And he said, you know, I want to do legislation. Let's do something now. I'll, say, <laughs> I'll sign it. We're going to come up with a solution. God bless you all. Thank you. President Trump vowing to take action. The president who has indicated his openness to gun control met students. To the NRA and Wayne LaPierre. It looked like the president was walking away from Gun them. Gun rights supporters were dumbfounded. They were stunned. They and day after day, it continued. You guys, half of you are so afraid of the NRA. There's nothing to be afraid of. And you know what? If they're not with you, we have to fight them every once in a while. That's OK. I appreciate it very much. President Trump really well. making you. some waves in the gun control debate. So we're going to have to fight them. Language that the NRA clearly does not want to hear. But Then Trump went even further. He decided to revive Obama's Newtown bill. Democrats and Republicans are going to be seated around one table. Mr. Trump, at a freewheeling hour. He invited Senator Manchin and others to put together a deal. We could have one terrific bill that everybody started by the people around this table. We could have an amazing result. Now, this is not a popular thing to say in terms of the NRA, but I'm saying it anyway. I'm going to just have to say it. But people want to see something happen, some good stuff. We want to pass something great. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, could you see yourself supporting us? To sweeten the deal, Manchin would offer to rename the bill, the Trump Common Sense Gun Bill. Heated debate that put him at odds with the power. The NRA sprung into action. Wayne LaPierre headed to the White House for a face-to-face -face with the president. The NRA quickly reacting to that exchange strongly... He made it clear where the NRA stood. back against something the president said about assault style... Rape. Wayne LaPierre got with President Trump and knocked him upside the head a little bit. And, you know, before you knew it, there was no gun safety legislation and Parkland had produced nothing in Washington. Despite denials from the White House, it's the president who appears to be bending to the NRA. Trump appears to be bowing to the demands of the NRA. The NRA, meanwhile, claims it has the president on its side. They are the 
best equipped, most feared special interest group on Capitol Hill. I mean, they are sort of the gold standard in how to do uh, lobbying work in Washington. I think, truth be told, the White House needs the NRA. The NRA needs this White House. LaPierre and the NRA were early investors in the Trump presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. They had spent more than $30 million supporting the Trump campaign. The NRA, um, earlier than ever before, officially endorsed him and supported his campaign. In the political environment, they had to become pro-Trump and, and very assertively pro-Trump. Soon after that visit to the White House, President Trump and the NRA were back on the same team. Great meeting in the Oval Office tonight with the NRA. Respect Second Amendment. Highly trained expert teachers will be allowed to conceal. I want to thank all of our friends and patriots at the NRA. We will never fail, and we will always protect your Second Amendment. But the Parkland students were keeping the pressure on. Developing story on the south side. Survivors from the Parkland, Florida school shooting. Survive the Parkland school shooting have announced a nationwide bus tour to change gun laws. They traveled the country, pushing their gun control campaign. Bus tours making more than 50 stops in over 20 states pushing for gun reform. Through our unified message, we were able to combat them in ways that they had never been challenged before. We must put an end to the senseless violence that rages in our communities. We need to put each other first. Yes. For about two decades, Democrats were running scared of the NRA. And I think Parkland changed that. When the kids of Parkland started this incredible grassroots movement, it captivated constituents. Democratic lawmakers started hearing from people back home, hey, why aren't you doing anything? The Parkland students had helped put gun control on the agenda of the 2018 midterms. The NRA was under fire. I'll take it on the NRA. Ban assault rifles, ban bump stocks. One out of five guns are obtained without a background check. The NRA. For the first time, These weapons have no place hundreds of Democrats were taking on the NRA. I'll fight the gun lobby. Because the NRA is an embarrassment. And weapons I used in Iraq have no business on our streets. We had had a moment. We had had a chance to turn the tides. And we fundamentally did. This is CNN Breaking News. This is a very significant defeat for Mr. Trump, a historic accomplishment for the Democrats. And on election night, a big victory for those Democrats who challenged the NRA. Picked up more than two dozen House seats to take control for the first time in eight years. Many of them are from red districts, some of whom represent districts that haven't been in Democratic hands since the early 1960s. Those people are not NRA supporters. One candidate who won was Letitia James. New York now has a new state attorney general. The New York attorney general. State's top legal official, and Tish James made his Democrat Letitia Tish James and. And our nation is at a pivotal moment in history, and we are careening. She immediately chaos turned her sights on the NRA. An attorney general who will go after gun manufacturers and the NRA. As attorney general, James would go after the NRA from a new angle to try and weaken it from the inside. The New York attorney general has a lot of power. She can subpoena their records, and she can look into precisely how they are raising and spending money. She was going to dig in and see what exactly were they doing. How were they spending their money? The National Rifle Association is under investigation by New York State's attorney. The NRA in crisis, with the New York Attorney General launching an investigation. New York's Attorney General's office has opened an investigation. And so that became a really significant threat to the NRA. $200,000. Then a big break that would feed the investigation. Wayne LaPierre looting the coffers. Complained about the NRA's tax exempt Leaks from inside the NRA. 
hundreds of millions of dollars. From Allegations of lavish spending and financial misconduct by LaPierre. The NRA spent more than $200,000 of its members' donations. There were bills for nearly $300,000 from a Beverly Hills clothing store, private jets to the Bahamas, and plans for a $6 million mansion on a Dallas golf course. There were a lot of people around NRA looking to be rich. Can't imagine any other nonprofit in the entire country that has a similar mission where people are making so much money. Aaron Davis spent a decade as an NRA fundraiser. This is the first time he has spoken on camera. The hypocrisy of it all is that the membership who gives $25 does they don't know where their money's going. To date, Attorney General James has issued subpoenas to nearly 100 former and current NRA officials. LaPierre has denied any wrongdoing, but the investigation has thrown the NRA and its leadership into crisis. Now you see a Wayne LaPierre who's under siege and backed into a corner. And the NRA is vulnerable to these investigations and to its finances that are ongoing. So it's just mired in internal problems and, you know, dysfunction. And now, in the midst of the presidential campaign, LaPierre, the NRA, and their chosen candidate find themselves in the crosshairs of Democratic challengers. And I want to tell you, if I'm elected NRA, I'm coming for you, and gun manufacturers, I'm going to take you on, and I'm going to beat you. I'm the only one who's done it. We need to expand background checks and the gun show loophole and do what the American people want, not what the NRA okay, but wait, wants. Wait a but Wayne LaPierre, as always, says the NRA is ready for the, the fight. The threat that is staring us in the face right now with this election is greater than any threat we've faced in our lives. I'm here to tell you that it will not happen on my watch, I promise you. and other Frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org slash frontline. Frontline's NRA Under Fire is available on Amazon Prime Video.